morning everyone this is the day that the Lord has made we can rejoice and be glad in it thank you for joining us again for this time of prayer worship and the word it is our hope and our desire that in the next few weeks we will continue to grow in our faith continue to grow in our love for God and continue to grow in our knowledge of God as we continue to press on uh, our uh, press on with our time with God let us pray Lord we thank you Lord God for another day that you have made thank you Lord God that this day will be another day where we can meet you get to know you and encounter you thank you Lord God that even as the this uncomfortable difficult days that pass one day at a time is also a day where you meet us where you do things in our hearts in our lives and things around us lord we continue to trust that your will shall be done we continue to trust that your will be your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven thank you lord god for this beautiful day in jesus name Let us worship God. Majestic Creator, you're perfect in every way. The Alpha and Omega, how awesome are you? We bow down We cry out Life giver Redeemer Amazing is your grace Full of wonder is your power even angels can't come we bow down we cry out we enter in your gate let every voice proclaim be enthroned in this place you are worthy all heaven shouts your name creation sings your praise great is the king of kings you are holy You're holy. Majestic Creator, You're perfect in every way. The Alpha and Omega, how awesome are Your ways? We bow down. Oh. We cry out. We enter in your gates. Let every voice proclaim. Be enthroned in this place. You are worthy. All heaven shouts your name. Creation sings your praise. Great is the King of kings. You are holy, we enter in your gates, let every voice proclaim, be enthroned in this place, you are worthy, all heaven shouts your name, creation sings your praise, great is the King of kings, you are holy. Holy, holy, holy. 
today we pray Lord God that your presence will go with us that your grace will be abundant even in our experience Lord we pray that you would open the eyes of our heart open the ears open our ears that we might hear your word even beyond the words that I can speak Lord. lead us Lord God as we go on with the day lead us Lord God as we go on and follow you with our lives Open the word to us today, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's get into the word this morning. Let me read from our text, James chapter 3, verse 4. It says, Look at the ships also, though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of our life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird and of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and and salt water. Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. A few years ago, my brother took my family to an island off the, of Negros. It was called Lakawon. During that time, it wasn't very, uh, very developed uh, at, that, uh, uh, at that time. So we had to take a small motorized banka to cross to the island. It was a short trip, probably around 20 minutes. You could practically see the island clearly from uh, standing on the beach on the mainland. And since it was a very nice day, uh, very calm, 
we practically took a, almost a straight line from the beach, from the mainland, all the way to the island. We enjoyed the day there. Uh, my, my brother let us use this jet ski, so my kids had fun. And by the afternoon, we were about to go back, to, uh, back home. But be, wh while we were getting ready to go back home, a squall came. Strong rains and strong winds. So we had to wait for this uh, squall to end. So it took us about, uh, about half an hour of just waiting, uh, letting the rains pass and letting the strong winds pass. And we, uh, as soon as it was done, as soon as it was clear, we started to board uh, the, uh, the boat back to the mainland. But this time, because of the squall, the waves were, were quite large. And uh, I could already begin to see uh, from the faces of my family, my wife and my kids, the great concern that was that, that they were uh, that, that the great concern they had looking at the huge waves ahead. Now, I grew up with boats, so I wasn't really looking at the waves. I looked at it, but I was looking at the at the pilot of the of the boat, watching whether he knew what he was doing. So while we were crossing and uh, the moment we were about to get into the, uh, the part of the big waves, I started looking at the pilot. And just a few waves, uh, uh, just a few maneuvers uh, through the waves, I realized that this guy knew what he was doing. So I, I had uh, a, a sort of peace uh, during the time. And uh, in the next few minutes, we went through uh, uh, what I would call, uh, what I would descri describe an adventure. And uh, uh, to say the least, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we made it. And it's interesting that going to the island, uh, the use of the rudder was very minimal because the, uh, the sea was really calm. But going back, the skill that the, that the uh, uh, pilot had in traversing that, uh, that, uh, the waves, he had to use his, uh, his rudder uh, to get us through. I, in a sense, you would say that the rudder got us through the storm uh, that day. There is a way out of this crisis. There is a path towards victory in the midst of this challenge. Many of us probably don't think about something that the Lord gave us. A, 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 a how would you call this? A tool, a weapon that we can use to confront the challenge we face today. Now, I know many of us are planning and uh, we have all this time. Uh, we, we, we have so many ideas, uh, strategizing, preparing as we get back, uh, uh, as we get our back, uh, back our life uh, running all over again. But I want to encourage us uh, to take the time to look at this weapon, in a sense, this tool that God gave us to get our lives through this difficulty and through towards the purpose and the blessings of God in our lives. And it's no un none other than our tongue. Our tongue, our words could help or destroy us. Our words could either take us through the victory or keep us def defeated. Look at the scripture. Listen to the scripture in the Message Bible uh, that we read earlier in another translation. It says, A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with, its, with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer. See, friends, our words through our tongues are written by our hands. Our words sometimes highly charged with emotions, sometimes written rants in anger or thoughtfully said words creates a path towards a destination. Go back to the scripture. 
uh, so, uh, amazing, amazing things that it says. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy. A carelessly, wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that, which means do this, do setting the fire, setting the forest on fire. By our speech, we can ruin the world. Turn harmony to chaos. Throw mud on a reputation. Send the whole world up in smoke. This is what the scripture says. The power that's in our tongue or in the words that we, 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 we use. And the words and how we put our, our, our thoughts, our emotions into words. Proverbs. Let me read a few scriptures in Proverbs. Proverbs 12, 18 says, Rash language cuts and maims, but there is, a, there is healing in the words of the wise. Careful words make for a careful life. Careless talk make ruin, may ruin everything. Proverbs 15.1 A gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles temper, fire. Proverbs 15 verse 28 The heart of the righteous weighs its answers. But the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Proverbs 18 verse 20. The fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Wow. Words from our mouth or those written by our hands can create good or bring destruction. Where are the words from our mouth or where are the words that we use, where are the words that we write? Take, or where is it taking us? What is the destination that our words are preparing for us? James chapter 3, verse 9 says this, With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and curses. He says, my brothers, these things ought not to be so. In other words, he's saying, stop this. This is not supposed to be this way. Friends, we can praise God in the midst of chaos, in the midst of challenges. We can praise God in the midst of confusion. We can direct our lips and our words towards victory. We can set the course of our lives by the words that come out from our mouth or the words we write with our hands. As we close, how do we prophesy, declare, and confess God's will over our life, our family, our nation, and our world? Verse 11 says this, A spring does not gush fresh water one day and brackish the next. Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a pol in, in polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, wa a clear cool water, are you? So as we close, I want to throw three questions. The first one is, who is the source of your words? Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom... Every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Christ in our hearts should be the source of the words that come out of our mouth. Christ in our hearts, that means there's love there. Their strength, the fullness of God is in there. When we let words come out from the love of God, we will end up in His will, His grace, and His purpose. Friends, don't let anger, hopelessness, fear, and evil be the source we draw out or we draw our words from. Second question is, what word seeds have you planted in you? Remember the parable of the sower and the seed? It says that the Word of God is the seed and the ground is our hearts. Do you plant seeds of the Word continuously in your hearts? Now, these days, we have the time. 
I'm glad that you're joining us in worship in the morning. But I'd like to encourage you that after this, keep pressing on. Plant seeds of the words in our hearts. Psalm 107, verse 19 they were, the, the psalmist was crying out. He says, They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. Now look at this. He sent out His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. In the midst of their cry, Lord, save us. What does God do? He sends His word to them. He sends His word to them. And that word, as they embraced it, as they, as they declared it, it delivered them from destruction. A question we need to ask, uh, uh, to ask in the same, uh, uh, it, together with this, is the question, what does the Word of God say about my situation today? Friends, look for that Word. Plant it in your heart. Plant it more and more in your heart until it springs out in words that come out of your mouth or written by your hands. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says this, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Also through Him the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. What is God's promise for your situation today? Again, look for it. Plant it in your heart and let it come out of your mouth. Plant seeds of God's word in our, in our hearts, more of it, more of it, until it springs out of our mouths. Last question. Are your words going the right direction? Friends, pray the word. Prophesy the word of promise. Declare the word of God. Confess the word of God over your life, over your situation, over our nation, and over the world. Pray for the problem, then prophesy God's word to it. The word does not say talk about the mountain. It says speak to the mountain. Glance at the problem, then focus on the promise of God. Stop exploring the power of the problem. Instead, believe in the gospel, the power of God to them that believe. Don't put, don't put your fear into words. Instead, confess your words of faith. Declare your words of faith. Express your words of faith. Stop telling, you, stop telling yourself this crisis will change your life. Instead, declare the will of God that it will be established on earth as it is in heavens. Are your words taking you out of this crisis? Let your words proclaim the grace of God and your faith in Him. Lord, we thank You that You have given us Your Word not just to read, but to prophesy and declare. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that we, as we spend time in Your Word, let the words that come into our hearts be expressed and confessed with our mouths as we express our faith in words, we trust that just like a small rudder, the word, your words in our mouth will take us past these storms and these trials we're facing. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God again. Jesus, you want it all You reign forever You reign forever Holy and glorious You reign forever You reign forever Jesus, you You reign forever, holy and glorious. You reign forever, you reign forever. Sing when I was so lost, when I was so lost, you chose to. Your life upon 
Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for the gift of your word to us. Let me encourage you to make your faith confessions. To write it down. Take the word of God and make your confessions. Make your own prophecies. Prophecy is a declaration of God's word. And you have a whole uh, thousands of pages of prophecies from God which you can take and make it your own as you confess and prophesy the word of God to your life. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to be with us. Lord, that you would continue to open our eyes to the truth of your word, that you would continue to stir up a desire and a hunger and a passion for your word. Lord, that you would continue to speak to us as we read your word, that we would uh, allow us, Lord God, uh, Lord, that you would give us the, the desire and the ability, Lord God, to, 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 to continue to put your word in our hearts, more and more of it, Lord God, until it changes the way we see things, until it changes... Uh, 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 the, the way we, what we believe until it changes the truth that we live with and that we live for. Now let me read this scripture and bless you as we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. See you again next time. May you have a blessed day. May you have a blessed life. May the word of God's truth be established in your life. Amen.